Hey guys, what's going on? This is Nasa from Charlotte, aka the real estate guru. I'm not your guru, I'm your guru because I actually do this business. And today I briefly want to talk about working with other wholesalers. And if you wonder, like, why does this guy have a hood on? Because right now it's, I want to say, spring here in Charlotte, and spring is a lot of pollen, a lot of silkworms that come out during this time. And uh, recently I was at the property the other day and got some silkworms in my hair, so that was that creeped me out. So that's why I got my hood on, to keep these uh, silkworms from getting in my hair. Uh, so hopefully, um, you know, I got my hood on, so I'm hoping nobody just comes up and shoots me, you know. So with that being said, um, I want to talk about working with other wholesalers uh, briefly, just a little tip, guys. Uh, with that being said, you know, um, recently I'm marketing a property that I'm at now, and it's a, a rental property in a, in a rental type neighborhood, and I'm marketing via banner signs and Craigslist. And with that being said, you know, sometimes I get calls from other wholesalers, uh, newbies from Craigslist, and they are saying, hey, look, I'm an, um, uh, they're asking me all these questions, scripted questions, and you could tell that they're new due to the lack of confidence and the uh, the questions that they're asking. They all sound alike, and I mean nothing against that. I was once there at that point at that point as well, but so I just cut them off and say, "Hey, look, I'm a wholesaler. Are you a wholesaler as well?" Yeah. So then we talk, and they say, "Hey, you know, I have a buyer for the property." I say, "Well, cool. Listen, you have a buyer." Bring the buyer to the property. I say, I, I work with other wholesalers. I don't really have a greedy mentality. And I say, look, this is what I have the property contracted for. And let's let's play with some numbers. I have the property contracted for 28 and I'm selling it for 35 This is a, a rental neighborhood, sits on a lot of land. Well, and they say, well, Zillow said it's worth 100 uh, in thirty thousand dollars, I said no, no, no. I said it does have a, that as a tax value, but the property is not worth that. When you um, sell it to the investor, this property is based on the value because of the return that it could bring. I said this property is a three one. You could probably get seven fifty out of the thing, and your be all in maybe uh forty five the max and it brings back around seven fifty a month. So that's what the value at in this deal. It's not really a, a fix and flip or you can't really sell it to somebody, well, it's worth a hundred plus. I said those are not Zillow is not accurate with that estimate. So some of them get it and some of them don't. But I let them know what I got on the contract and what we're gonna sell it for and I say, hey well, look we're gonna split this. But one particular individual, he decided to mark the price up to forty-five thousand and market my deal for forty-five thousand dollars, and and say that is worth a hundred something. I told, I I told the uh, you know I I told the individual that called me like, hey, look, you sold the house. I said no, I'm I'm about to go to the house now and meet some um, buyers, and. That person said, well, somebody's marketing your deal for 45000 And the person told me, that's pretty much, they legally they can't do that. They don't have an interest in the property. They don't have a contract. I said, yeah. I said, well, what happened was I've been getting some wholesalers calling me, and I told them what I have it for, and, and they all say they have this buyer. I said, well, bring the buyer to the deal, and if your buyer wants to buy the property, you'll split the um, fee. And... Apparently, they take that as, okay, let me go market for a buyer. He's willing to, you know, work with me. So, with that being said, I mean, if I'm telling you what I have it for and what we could sell it for, keep it like that. Because at that price point that I'm selling it for, it's a deal. When you tack on X amount without my permission or without discussing that with me, at that point, it's no longer a deal to someone. So I just wanted to, you know, just give you that lesson, you know. And when I tell the wholesalers that I train and uh, in other markets, I tell them, look, if you want to work with other wholesalers, ask them what they have on the contract for and what, they, um, what they're selling it for if they are open to a joint venture. If they are not, I, I said usually, if they're open to it, they'll tell you. But if they have a scarcity mentality, well, look, you put this on top of my price, whatever you get after that, you can keep. I mean, that works sometime, but a lot of times it doesn't work. And I tell the people that I'm training, 
look, don't do that because a lot a lot of times you can't do that if there's not enough meat on the bone. Reason being because you make yourself look stupid in your market because a lot of times people get marketed the same price. I might send a deal to someone at 35, then you turn around and send it to that same person a few days later for 45000 So how does that make you look as a wholesaler? So just take that those things in consideration. You know, if somebody's gonna work with you and they tell you what they have in the contract for and what we can sell it for, then keep it like that unless you have hardcore numbers stating otherwise saying, look, I know I can get you more. Let me pick up the phone and call this buyer and I know I can get more out the deal. You know, that's just a tip for me. And I'm Nasa here in Charlotte. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until next time, man, you know, much success in your business and in your life.